So this lesson is going to be on double integrals and centers of mass. Let's remind ourselves what a lamina was. So we perceive it as an infinitely thin surface in two dimensions that may indeed have variable density. So as you move in a certain direction, it may get a little bit heavier. That's our idea. So we think of it as, again, a thin piece of sheet metal, a piece of paper, but with differing density typically is more interesting for us. And we talked about the mass of a lamina. The mass of the lamina is the double integral over the region R that we're looking at of the density function. So let's remember rho of x, y is the density function. So it's the double integral over the density function, over R, excuse me, of the density function dA, which is typically dy dx, unless we're working in polar coordinates or something like that. So that is our mass. Now, our goal is to discuss the center of mass. In other words, where can we balance this? This seems to be heavier on this end than this end. So maybe about here, if I put a little fulcrum underneath that, maybe that thing would balance on that point. That's what we're thinking about. Now, if we're gonna answer that question, we have to talk about some moments. So we'll first talk about the moment with respect to the x-axis. Now, what that means is likelihood to rotate on a line parallel to the x-axis. You'll notice this is very heavy over here, so it might, it might rotate horizontally in that direction, or it might rotate vertically. But how likely is it to rotate in a line parallel to the x-axis what this moment delineates? Now, that is the double integral over r of y times the density function rho of x, y, dA. Similarly, m sub y is the double integral over r of x. That's the tendency to rotate in a line parallel to the y-axis of rho of x, y, dA. Now, what is the center of mass? What is the center of mass? We typically use x bar comma y bar. Looks like the average x, average y if you're using notation from statistics. And that x bar is m sub y divided by the mass. And the y bar is m sub x divided by the mass. So it's our basic idea, but finding a center of mass is a way for us to consider everything happening at a single point. So it is an important concept in physics for sure. So let's go ahead and work through an example. So given a lambda, uh, lamina bounded by y equals root x, y equals zero and x equals one, together with a density function, rho of x, y equals two y, our goal then is to find the center of mass. So let's visualize that if we can. So here is our lamina and the Density function is 2y, so the density down here is very low, and as it grows, it gets more and more dense. In a sense, it gets heavier as the y values increase. So can we guess maybe where the center of mass might be with that in mind? Well, let's see where we have to go. So what do I need? I need to find little m. I need to find the moment with respect to x and the moment with respect to y to find that center of mass. So let's go ahead and look at that region so that we can identify our endpoints for our double integral. So focusing on the mass, m is the double integral over r of the density function dA. So what will that be here? Double integral over r. Now what is r ranging from, or what is our region of interest? If I go southern boundary to northern boundary, southern boundary y equals zero to northern boundary y equals root x. So y equals zero to root x. What's the lowest x value I see anywhere here? x is zero. What's the largest x value I see anywhere? One. What is my density function? Two y, my order, my inside, 
integral is with respect to y, so I need to go dy dx. So that's the setup for this. And we know our usual strategy. What do we do? We first like to find our inner integral. So our inner, inner integral is integral as y goes from 0 to root x of 2y dy. Well, the antiderivative of 2y is just y squared as y goes from 0 to root x, which would be root x squared minus 0 squared, which is x minus 0, which is just x. So my inner integral there is x, so I will replace the inner integral here with x. Now we'll go ahead and evaluate the mass of that lamina. So m is the integral as x goes from 0 to 1 of the inner integral is x dx, which of course is x squared over 2 as x goes from 0 to 1 which will give me 1 half minus 0 squared over 2. So the mass is 1 half, which we will need. Again, keeping in mind our formulas here. We have m sub x. We have this moment, which has a y in it. We have m sub y, which has an x in it. A little difficult to remember sometimes. Uh, x bar is going to be m sub y divided by m, and y bar is going to be m sub x divided by m. So let's find m sub y next so that we can identify x bar. So here's the information I need to determine what m sub y is. I need the double integral over that region. Again, southern boundary, y equals 0. Northern boundary, y equals root x. x values range from 0 to 1. Then I have x times rho of x, y, which is 2y, dA, which I will do as dy, dx. So let's go ahead and do our inner integral first. What will the inner integral be? It's the integral as y goes from 0 to root x of x times 2y, dy. Now, as far as y is concerned, x is a constant. So that is x times the integral as y goes from 0 to root x of 2y dy. And the antiderivative of 2y is y squared. So I get xy squared evaluated as y goes from 0 to root x, which will give me what? Which will give me x times root x squared minus x times 0 squared. Well, root x squared is x. x times x is going to be x squared. So after all that, our inner integral is x squared. So we can go ahead and make that substitution in the inner integral. We're going to say m sub y is the integral as x goes from 0 to 1 of x squared dx, which will be x cubed over 3, evaluated as x goes from 0 to 1. So m sub y is 1 cubed over 3 minus 0 over 3, 0 cubed over 3, which of course is 1 third. So we have m sub y, which will be the numerator for x bar m sub x will be the numerator for y bar. So let's do that next. So this is our formula for that m sub x moment. So if we look at our endpoints, they are the same as they were before. So y goes from 0 to root x, and x goes from 0 to 1. Then I have y, and rho of x, y was 2y. And dA, of course, will be dy dx. So we get m sub x is the integral as x goes from 0 to 1, as y goes from 0 to root x of 2y squared dy dx. So let's go ahead and do the inner integral. Inner integral, of course, is here. So we have the integral 
inner integral is integral as y goes from zero to root x of two y squared dy, which is two y cubed over three as y goes from zero to root x, which is two thirds, root x to the third minus two thirds is zero to the third. So that gives me what? That gives me two thirds x to the three halves as my inner integral. So continuing then m sub x is the integral as x goes from zero to one inner integral two thirds x to the three halves dx. So now let's take our antiderivative, kick that up by one. That'll be two thirds x to the five halves over five halves. Over five halves is the same as times two fifths. Evaluated as x goes from zero to one. And what do we get? We get m sub x is four fifteenths times one to the five halves minus four fifteenths times zero to the five halves so that m sub x is equal to four fifteenths. So let's collect all the information we have and determine the centroid or center of mass x bar comma y bar. So here's the information that I have, x bar being m sub y divided by m, m sub y is one third divided by one half of course is one third times two, which is two thirds. So we get x bar for our center of mass appears to be two thirds. Y bar is m sub x over m, m sub x is four fifteenths divided by our m was one half. So that's four fifteenths times two over one, which is eight fifteenths. So what are we gonna say? The center of mass is two thirds, eight fifteenths. But let's go take a look at our graph and see if that seems reasonable. So here's our region. And we remember the 2y that as y gets larger, this lamina gets more dense. Our row of xy was 2y, so it's heavier towards the top than it is on the bottom. Now, I believe the center of mass is at 2 thirds, 8 fifteenths. Let's click that. Does that seem reasonable, given the fact that the top is heavier than the bottom? I think so. So indeed, that is our centroid or center of mass at 2 thirds, 8 fifteenths.